My name is Matthew Gargiulo and I'm the owner of the Pop Shack. Funkos are basically, they started off as a bobblehead company and transformed into what you see now of the vinyl figures. Half of them are bobbleheads, half are vinyl figures. It's the, a lot of it has to do with contractual rights to the toy companies that they have to be bobbleheads and they can't be a vinyl figure. And they pretty much make them for anything. If you can name it, they make it or it's coming out this year or next year. If a new movie comes out, there's a pop coming with it. If it's hot in pop culture, there's a pop coming with it. A Funko Pop for me is the best, is, is practically a collection that defines you as far as like throughout your whole history of that you have lived. These toys allow you to actually present yourself in such way because they can go anywhere from a movie to a TV show to a game and I'll be in a universal setup and say, hey, this is me in a nutshell in such a stylish way, so. They're like little mini action, action figures of like your favorite characters from TV shows or movies, and they just have a big head with round eyes. So how was to describe a Funko Pop? Um, I would say a bobble head, they don't always bobble. Kind of stylized, big eyes, and they're just really cool. I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe them. I would describe a Funko Pop to like a way to express your interest in stuff as well as like geekiness I guess like there's it's a collectible figure that you if you like an artist like Tupac you can have a Tupac Pop you can have a General Leia Pop so much it's a toy and it's a cool toy and it has different features you know sometimes you got like uh, you know like you said, Tupac Pop, and you got Biggie Pop, and you can show it to your friends, and you know, uh, Tupac's say, better, Biggie's better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Funkos that they do have, they actually do pop rides, which comes with a ride of some kind. So, like, we have the Chimichanga truck which is actually from uh, San Diego Comic-Con from two years ago, which is crazy that it's still here. Another pop that we do have is three packs. We also do two packs. Um, this one's actually from Walmart. Walmart's really, really hard to get pops anymore just because either the store doesn't carry it because they don't think they sell well or they're so popular that they go right out the door. And then another cool thing that uh, Funko does is called Dorbs. Dorbs are adorable, just like the Pops are, but tinier and not as boxy. They're more round. Danny E.B., the producer. I've known about Pops for about 10 years. I go to Comic-Con, and it's always been like this huge booth that you never get into but you would always be looking from the outside in going I want to be in there so just because of the the toughness to get into it I just never I just stayed away whatever I could get uh, after I would just pick up pieces like I got the uh, BMO from Adventure Time for my son and that's kind of where it started for us because I brought it home from Comic-Con one year he liked it then we went to Star Wars Celebration he bought Bosk and that started us on our Star Wars journey. So now we've got like Marvel, we've got Star Wars, we've got Disney, and then my personal favorite is the Hanna-Barberas, which I collect for those. 
Well, I started collecting them just because, I don't know, I was, I was just off work for a little bit and kind of bored and then it all kind of went downhill from there. And now I have, I don't know, like a hundred. Um, it's just, uh, it's fun to go out and uh, try to find them, you know? It's, it, the harder it is to find, and then when you do find it, you get that kind of relief of, yes, you know? Actually, it's a funny story because I used to talk bad, bad stuff about them, very bad stuff. Because I was like, oh, what is this? A wannabe so and so, or who, who buys bubble heads? Like, yeah, his little brother uh, showed him, oh, look what I got, George, I, I, I got uh, my first pop. And, and then... I was like, it ain't a six inch figure though. I mean, it's not, it's nothing special to me. It's just a, you know, it's like a bubble head. I mean, and, I got a collectible figure. And look at him now, you know. Here. I bought 200, I got, I yeah. bought 20 pops for one for free. Spends thousands on that one free I wouldn't pop. Go that far. For that <laughs> one free pop? Yeah. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Everything, it's amazing. It's from four-year-old kids up to 80-year-old grandmas that are picking them up, whether they're for their grandkids or for themselves. That It hits every age base of people. Uh, why do I collect them? It's just, uh, as of recently, I've been finding more of the uh, subculture genre of things that I like finally making a scene. Um, like things like the like the tech and fighting game, things like that you wouldn't find previously before. Uh, the reason I collect, it's just a fun thing to do. It, it's nice to have a, a, a cool collection to have. You know, uh, football jerseys some people have swords and knives and I got pops. The reason why people collect pops, it's comparatively speaking to other collectible things like action figures and stuff like that. Action figures usually range from like 40 to like 70 bucks. Pops usually the average price is 9.99 or so. So it's an easy way like, oh, there's a Han Solo pop. I'll get it and I'll put it in my shelf. Or it's a small, it doesn't take that much space. It's just small. It's cute little bubble head, vinyl figure. So for me, that's why I think people collect them because it's just an easy thing you can cost. You can put in your shelf, kitchen, work, anywhere. You're not gonna have a stormtrooper helmet in your office unless you you're your own boss, which at that point it's cool. But that, in my opinion, that's why people collect pops. My opinion uh, is to keep up with the cool kids, you know, all what the cool kids are doing. You know, they're collecting stuff, collecting you know toys and stuff to be cool. That's why I think. So you're just a follower. I think some of the stuff's very nostalgic, especially when you start getting to the 80s and 90s cartoons and movies, and it's just the fan base, the, the nerd culture is where it is now. It's the mainstream media. It's all everything on TV now is nerd. It's not what you, not what it used to be 10 years ago.